Hello and welcome to Holly Hamill Hive podcast picture show. I have my friend Ken Catchpole as my guest today, and we are going to be exploring all of the inner workings of Ken's mind and experience. <laughs> Ken, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, and th thank you, thank you, Holly, um, so much for inviting me on. This is a whole new experience. Um, yeah, I'm. Uh, uh, I I'm I'm an academic, I guess. Though I. Um, my I'm from England uh, and my mum my mum was from New Jersey she married my dad and and went to live with my dad in England and so uh, I grew up in England for the first 37 years of my life uh, and then um, was uh, had a job offer to come to Los Angeles and went to Los Angeles and it sort of changed my life in all sorts of different ways um, you know as these things happened it was the right time in my life and so now I find myself in South Carolina for another job offer. Um, I, I, um, um, I, my background, I, I, my educational background is that I have a PhD in psychology and physiology, um, cognitive, you know, cognitive psychology rather than sort of therapeutic psychology. And what I do is I look at the relationship between people and systems, uh, systems of work, technologies, all that sort of thing. And for the last 18, 19 years, um, I've been working to try and understand why things go wrong in medicine and how we can help, uh, how we can like help doctors and nurses um, uh, perform in, in, in better ways by really understanding how to use their expertise and, and, and shape the world around them. So that's what I do. Um, and it's taken me in all sorts of adventures and it's a great way to be spending my life. And it's a, you know, it's a, it's a valid thing to do. I, you know, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to be able to do that. Um, but it's also, no, but that's that's only a portion of what I do, or, or rather, I hope I hope what we we're going to talk about. So, um, yeah, that's perfect. that will do. Perfect, perfect. Let's just jump right into really getting to know you as a person. So, so Ken, what makes you come alive? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I was trying to think about this, and a lot, you know, lots of so lots of different things, and I think uh, I think it's an important question to ask because we all need to know what that is and it's different for everyone um and you know we can't always be doing things that that always are, you know at the sort of peak of making us come alive but understanding that there are things that are important you know to me um and what they are and and to make sure that i do do them um ultimately i think it's a it's about having an adventure um and you know adventures come in many forms uh, and you know and and the 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 life is an, an adventure and and that Having having adventures, having new experiences, doing new and crazy things, uh, and you know that test yourself and and also um, uh, um, expand you know our, our individual experiences uh, and maybe you know do amazing things for others. Um, uh, uh, the sorts of things that um, you know I think makes me makes me come alive. What really actually makes me come alive are, are things like um, uh, you know being. Um, uh yeah um uh traveling um uh being in fact yeah um uh being uh being in you know mountains and deserts i love i love the feeling of of insignificance <laughs> and we can get onto that but i love the feeling of insignificance that you get from being in in um in kind of vast outdoor situations um you know and i think also um yeah, just adventures in all sorts of different ways of doing new things and of, uh, of, of, of challenging myself in all sorts of different ways. I actually love, you know, I'm naturally kind of introverted, but I love getting up in front of people and doing the talks that I have to do for my academic stuff. It brings out a whole new person in me, which is really interesting. That's why this is a whole interesting experiment. I haven't done anything like this before. So, um, so yeah, um, what is life if it's not about trying to experience as many things as, as you can within, that doesn't mean you have to experience everything, but having adventures that, that test you and challenge you in all sorts of different ways. Absolutely. Um, so, so I, the, most of the interactions that you and I have had um, have been in the Burning Man community, that's yeah. where we met, and um, in some some uh, lower foothills mountains type of places out in the woods, and I know that you go to Burning Man out in the desert, right? 
So, so how did you get into, um, how did you get into Burning Man and like, what does it mean to you? Why do you keep going back? Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm a Burning Man bore. Um, you know, um, yes, Burning Man has fundamentally changed my life. Um, you know, I, I, as I said, I went to sort of Los Angeles at a time that was both professionally and personally important for me. I, I'd sort of, um, I, I when I moved to LA, I'd been just about split up from my wife for about two years um, and was in this sort of period of, of, of reassessing who I was and what I wanted to, you know, what I wanted out of life. I did a vision board uh, and at the same, at the time it was seemed impossible that the things I had on my vision board would ever come to pass. And then of course, eventually they did. Um, and one of those things was, you know, I met a friend in, I met, um, my friend um, Carrie Wagner in LA, who sort of was wonderful to me and said, you know, she, she, we, you know, she took me on all sorts of adventures. We did fun things. We went skiing and, you know, we went surfing and all that kind of stuff that you do. And then she said, hey, there's this thing in the desert um, uh, that you might want to go to. You might enjoy it. It's like, you know, it's like a, you know, it's like brave and camping and in the desert. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like those sorts of things. Um, she was actually part of the Ashram Galactica, so it was a long time burner. Uh, and so I managed to get a ticket by luck. Um, it was the first year that they had the lottery, so 2012. Um, so I was one of the people who, yeah, anyway. Um, and yeah, and then got to know Punk somebody who had an art car in Oakland. And so I turned up to this, you know, to work on an art car in Oakland. And somebody said, there's some tin snips and I need you to cut out this sheet steel, you know, sheet steel to make this art car. And I was like, you know, I work in an office and I don't, don't do these manual stuff. And it was like, yeah, don't worry, here you go. And, you know, uh, and then went to Burning Man and, and found this sort of whole level of acceptance that I'd never had before. And I, um, the, the sort of the, the, um, uh, the the morning after my first burn was a sort of profound experience because I cried and I cried and I cried because I'd never felt beautiful before and it helped me to yeah sorry um it helped me to to see that in myself and so um kind of all this stuff that I'd, I'd, I'd sort of grown up with um you know with yeah that I was I was able to see my whole kind of who I was in a whole different way um so you know um and yeah and so yeah it had a profound effect on me uh and so since then i've been you know an evangelical burner and you know i you know we I, i'm a, a, a the art car is still ours and i've had a lot more you know um involvement in making that happen and and uh, i you know we end up running the camp i'm also a black rock ranger we, you know we also started running our own events and really trying to bring that to other people because it's been such a profound experience for me um, i love that i love i love looking at burning man as a transformational experience and oh i literally felt like i've been this in this cocoon and then burning man like for for years but and then burning man helped me to sort of you know help me to turn into a butterfly uh, because yeah literally it was such a profound experience I'd never felt beautiful before and then suddenly I had all these people accepting me for who I was and appreciating me for turning up and who I yeah and it was yeah profound that is amazing that is amazing was there like one like pivotal moment that that it all kind of like cracked open for you like that when the chrysalis cracked <laughs> and spread your butterfly wings is there like one like pivotal moment that you could share with us um yeah so um yeah i think um i, I you know it was it was the sort of culmination of the week that that you know i i um uh it was sort of involved in this you know we had, um we were involved in this art car and you know building it and getting it going and it was it was a wonderful experience for the first time to have it um to come back you know from the dmv with it's night license and all of that and that was like part of being something bigger but then at the end of the um you know at the end of the week and I didn't know any of these people who I camped with or I didn't know them very well and at the end of the week um um me and somebody else drove the drove this art car on burn night and so it was a really sort of you know big experience to go from hey you know, I don't know you, you don't know me from Adam but you're going to give me 
these tin snips to in the space of three months. Yeah, sure, here drive my art car, and it's it, and you know art car is awesome. And um, and yeah, then um, and then it was just um, and so we did that for that for the night, and then um, uh, went down to the temple. So I'd been you know um, uh, yeah went down to the temple at sunrise and was out in the middle of the desert, which is beautiful, and you know and those sorts of outdoor experiences are, are important for me, as I mentioned earlier, but also just, um, I guess this moment, I think, yeah, in fact, I even found, I found a butterfly. Um, it wasn't a real, but I think it was just a fake butterfly and it was in an art project and I, and I focused on that and I saw it and suddenly I saw, you know, that this whole, you know, um, yeah, felt like this, 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 yeah, the, the my my chrysalis, my pupa had cracked cracked open, and I really was. Um, yeah, and and I just cried and cried and cried, and then it was nice, and it was great. Thank you so much for sharing that tender and vulnerable moment. That's really really sweet. I love I love those moments at Burning Man where just something like breaks through and and it just cracks you wide open and you just oh yeah it, yeah the 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 person that you were before like is just um almost like sheds away and like this new um this new like iteration of yourself with this new awareness there's just that i see that happening so much and that's what keeps me going back to burns so yeah. um so tell me what your tell me tell me about your thoughts about roller coasters and superheroes. <laughs> so, so you know my my sort of I guess uh, um yeah so so there are these are two of my sort of semi comedic but also in my, their way deeply profound life philosophies. So you know one of which was an epiphany I had. You're riding roller coasters years ago. There were two you know there are two ways you can ride a roller coaster. Um, and one of which is to hold on for, you know, th that's the natural response. It's just to hold on. It's like you white like, on, you're like, like, ah. and you're like, against it. And you're like, no, no, don't go that way. No, don't go that way. And it's useless waste of time, right? Yeah, that's how you're you're um, and then I realized that actually, if you can, um, if you can let go and put your hands up, then you then it fundamentally changes how you experience a roller coaster um that it um it you know because you're sort of giving yourself away you know you're you're saying there's nothing i'm on this ride holding on and hey, go back now <laughs> isn't gonna help so stick your hands up and enjoy the ride to like and surrender is, and like lean in yeah it's an interesting it is an interesting thing because still I know that this is the case. And when I ride roller coasters, it, I do practice this, but it's really, really difficult to do to actually do that. But when you do, it's it's so much more, you know, there's there's an it, it's a, it becomes enjoyable rather than this thing to endure. And, I, <laughs> and, and that is an important life lesson, I think. But you do get to choose some of the rides you go on, you know, and once you're on the ride, you're on the ride and so put your hands up and enjoy the ride whatever that is because by and large you're not going to be changing the direction it's going so so you know the um uh, uh and it's the the kind of resistance um to that and the idea that you somehow have control over something that is often the source of of trouble and, and pain and dissatisfaction Whereas actually, if you just put your hands up and say, this is the ride and we're going to ride it out, um, however that, you know, however that happens, yeah, you might die on a roller coaster, but the chances are you're not going to. And so, <laughs> you know, and so that, that's a really, really useful thing, I think, generally um, for life. Um, the second, you know, and the second one is I came to a bit later, which we talked about a little, which is this idea that, that, um, that everyone has their sort of superpowers. Um, and the first challenge or trouble is finding what those superpowers are. And I don't know whether I even know what mine are, and you know, but um, but I would definitely put kazoo playing high on the list. <laughs> yeah. 
What am um, I now? <laughs> We're right there. We're right there with the kazoo playing. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, and you know, I think you know, one of my I, I found definitely some superpowers with what I do with Burning Man, which is I'm not particularly creative, but I I do a lot of the camp organizing, uh, organizing, uh, and so I show up and I take a lot, of, I take burdens for people. I think, um, at least I try to. So you know, I'm 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 good at, at trying to think about all the things we need to get thirty people to the desert and you know feed them and water them and give them shade and give them you know and all of that and then get them back again. Um, so I do a lot of that. Um, but, and operations, but, things like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not even that organized, but I just, I can, I sort of do a lot of thinking. I'm good at thinking ahead. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and also, you know, with my work, I understand, I understand mm, sort of people um, and behaviors and how, um, how different kind of conditions mm -hmm. and contexts can shape different behaviors, um, uh, uh, you know, and why people do, you know, why people contribute or not, anyway, all those sorts of things. Um, but actually- yeah, kazoo, the other... kazoo playing and logistics operations and uh, group behaviors <laughs> as your superpowers, what else you got? Exactly. How else is um, your showing up? And I, you know, I, I think it's sort of what, what it comes down to is, I think, you know, carrying, carrying weight for people. Um, uh, and so the other thing, but the other thing about superpowers, and I think the more important thing about superpowers is, it, you know, is that um, even if you don't know what they are, people are always going to, sorry, they're always going to, it's a challenge to, 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 to use them. That even Superman is like, can't people stop falling off buildings just for today? Can't kids, can't parents keep their kids from running in front of trains all the time? Do I have to be the one who's fixing everything all the time? So even Superman is like, I just want to have a night with Lois. Can you lot just stop doing what you're doing? And, and, and so, even, so even Superman would have those days when it's like, oh my God, people, can't you do your thing? And, and so, um, so understanding that, that, that your superpowers uh, are also... Um, the, the, the understanding how to use your superpowers and understanding that people want will you know might want to use them um, and and how you can be boundary but also um, you know, understand that they're a gift and that, that sometimes you're going to be called on to use to use them and that you know doing that with grace doing that with but with also with, with you know with some sense of boundary is an important part of it that you you do need to you know, because otherwise people will use superpower use will drain your superpowers um and you must absolutely find this because you clearly have superpowers and i'm sure there are all sorts of people who want to kind of have that power for themselves um uh and 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 you i'm sure you must have to be quite boundaried in in how that's given out yes yes i think that um that my my concept and i would love to hear your uh reflection on this in in terms of um, psychology and physiology, but my concept is that we all are um, like conduits, and we um, that we have this this life force, this you know, chi or you know, prana or like there's this this energy that flows through us, and maybe it's you know originated with the sinoatrial node in the heart, maybe it's <laughs> yeah. electrical, you know system in our brain. Who knows like what the actual source of it is? But we all fairly fairly agree that there's some type of energetic field to our beings. And so my belief is that we, um, that ideally when we're all plugged into source, higher power, whatever it is that you believe that's like something bigger than yourself, um, that when we're plugged into that and when we're grounded, um, plugged into the, the earth too, as you know, like an electrical system that we, we function our highest, but what ends up happening sometimes is people that are really good at sourcing that, um, that energy from source. So ideally we all source it like through ourselves, through this higher power. And it's just this, you know, we're not sucking the energy off of each other, but what ends up happening with, um, people that are, charismatic or it's really easy for them to source this energy that it um there's this convenience this this um energetic 
suck almost out of convenience ends up happening kind of like when we've got our cell phones and and we know that plugging them into the grid into a wall is the best way to charge them but then we also have these like juice packs right you know we have these like little like temporary batteries we like oh let me just get a little charge off of that and so we end up using each other subconsciously as like juice packs so we're like a person who you know can source a lot of energy Another person might be like, oh, it feel, I can tell you're really vibrant. I want to get next to that energy that feels good. Let me just plug my, you know, being into yours. And, yeah. and then what ends up happening is it's, it's draining to both when, when really the best source is to plug into the grid, into the, you know, the wall, the grid, but you know, source. And so, um, so that's, that's pretty much what I try to explain to people about, um, really pulling in your superpower and that can express however, however your personality chooses, whatever you're good at, you know, but it comes from source and then protecting it by understanding the concept that each of us do best when we're plugged into source too, not yeah. sucking off of each other, you yeah. know, the energetic vampirism, that sounds a little, you know, intense, but you know, no, we, that's, yeah, that's exactly, yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. We all do. We all do it. It's just a human thing. And it's, you know, of course, like conveniently like, Oh, here's, here's a, an energy source right here. Why would I, you know, path of least resistance? Why would I go to the, you know, to the wall when you're sitting right here, you know? And so what, um, but just reminding people that it's important to, to plug into source. Everyone has ability to do that. And just reminding people to, you know, by meditation, pretty much just breathing awareness and, um, and not to, to suck on each other and to, to source yeah. all ourselves. Cause that's when, that's how we're all, all going to be the best, like how we can all be superheroes that way. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, I, you know, I, I particularly sort of tend to see it in terms of, um, you know, close relationships, intimate, intimate relationships mm -hmm. where you can um, sometimes see these imbalances. And actually, the most important thing, I, you know, I realized in a relationship is that I needed to be the person for me I need to be that would allow me to be the person for somebody else, rather than this thing of, oh, you know, this person completes me or, oh, I, I feel good around them. They make me feel good about myself. You know, actually know that you've got to feel good about yourself and be grounded and have that energy because so, otherwise you're going to suck it off somebody else. Right. Um, and, uh, and, you know, and, and, you know, definitely, I think um, it takes, um, I think some people get to that, you know, uh, some people realize that early probably most people realize that you know after a few bad relationships <laughs> when you start to unpack that and of course some people don't ever realize that but um but yeah that was you know that was an important part of where i needed to be before i could have the relationships that i wanted to have the relationship that i wanted to have which is you know i needed to be you know uh, yeah the source of grounding for myself and understand what my superpowers were and know when you know when no i when um uh you know yeah and be able to use them and also um be very aware of, of my you know of, of our tendencies to want to kind of suck superpowers from you know the, that that energy from other people um it's a exactly. you know it's so, yeah so is there some kind like is there any type of um like physiological or psychological component that, you know, any terminology, cause I'm kind of like talking in this, like, you know, energetic, like esoteric <laughs> field. So like, is there anything that kind of relates to it? There's there any type of, um, you know, analogy or crossover that in your studies that kind of touch on this? I, you know, I, I, mm, I mean, not that I can think of. So I'm not, you know, I'm not really, um, uh, th this isn't my particular particularly strong area um you know i think a lot about um in in what i do i think a lot about sort of generally power that i work in organizations where you know i'm often trying to change the uh you know I, I a lot of what i do is trying to change people's perceptions about different things mm -hmm. that you know, actually, if we thought about it in this way, we would be able to solve this problem in a different way. Yeah. And, and that, that, that threatens people's sort of, source of power. And so I have to go about that in a very different way. And by source of power, I'm, you know, I, I sort of mean, I guess I mean agency, mm -hmm. um, the ability, oh, you know, um, so, you know, for example, I work with a lot of surgeons. Um, 
and surgeons are taught that, that, that it's all about them, that if they try hard enough and if they study hard enough and if they train hard enough, then their patients will have, have good outcomes. And I come along and say, well, yeah, that's sufficient, but not enough because you can have equipment that breaks or you can have um, other people who, um, who, don't, who you haven't told what, what's going on. And you, know, you can have you know, drugs that are badly packaged and people will make mistakes and things will go wrong and stuff that you know, will go wrong that's beyond your control and out of your power. And this can be very upsetting for people because when, when you have somebody who's, you know, um, uh, you know, for surgeons and they don't like, some of them don't like it when I sort of talk about those things, even though that's part of, you know, the, the, the kind of demonstrably true because it threatens their idea of their own sort of, um, you know, autonomy, that, that there are things beyond their control. That they, you know, and so that's a slightly different thing than what we're talking about. But, but I think it's reflected in where people kind of get their power and get their, um, uh, uh, get the basis from. And by the way, the, the solution that I talk, you know, that what I talk to about surgeons is that's the idea that you can't just rely on you, that you've got to involve everyone else and you've got to understand how, you know, um, how, um, how the care of a patient has to be shared across all these different people. And it's much better that it, that it is because, you know, by working together, we can, um, we can, if you like, share out the different energies and, 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 um, and the different challenges and the work that needs to be done and the decision making and, and, and the, the information that we have and all of those things need to be shared. And that if we share them, then we're going to be much better off than if we just rely on one person. So in fact, maybe to come back on what you said, I don't necessarily have a kind of technical term for this, um, but it's that idea of if you only you know that as well as being grounded in yourself if you only rely on yourself then you're not going to be nearly as powerful or as, or as effective as you know if you understand where you are in relation to other people and you're able to kind of um share around the different energies or the, the different things in different ways and you know mm -hmm. you see this with with you know if, if you're organizing an art project or a camp you try and find the things that people are good at and want to do and get them doing that because you know, quick, it's funny, that, you know, you find out that certain people hate doing this, but other people love doing that. It's like, great. Okay. You know, I hate filling out forms and administrative stuff. I can't do any of that, but other people do that really well. So, you know, so how we, how we share those energies out and, 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 you know, and find our superpowers or, you know, or, or, um, uh, yeah, and uh, and not just rely on ourselves, but understand that actually, if we kind of find ways to match them up, uh, we can all be much more powerful and do much more amazing things together. I I one hundred percent agree. I think we are. Um, there's so much uh, synergy that can happen with a, a well curated. Uh, theme camp, for instance. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a theme camp organizer myself. That's good. Yes, I know. Um, I've seen the amazing things you oh, do. <laughs> thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's kind of like my my main way that I show up for Burns. Um, in addition to like, I'm really into uh, helping support and create culture and um, kind of influence it in the way that is um, serving all. And then um, uh, and then Burning Man as a transformational. Uh, experience is kind of a value that's important to me but regarding the energies and like working together cohesively I found that when I when I was new at, at leadership and in, in doing the theme camp organization I would naturally think like oh well this person does this for their job they're going to be good at this thing already do you want to do this you know for the camp and I would maybe just ask them like hey this needs to be done would you do it and then what I found was that was not the um the best way because often people who were uh what they did with their job is not what they wanted to do on vacation like while they're playing like I you know, took care of children for many many years as a postpartum doula run a nanny agency the last thing I want to do is be taking care of people's kids at a burn you know like no thank you yeah. um and um even though I was good at it and probably you know one of the more equipped people to do it I just that's not what I wanted to do and so what I found was when I asked when I when I just said like hey here's a here's a, a task or a, a set of things that needs to be done and then just leave it open like who wants to do it rather than asking someone and often people that you would never think um 
would be interested or like they're really into it or they want to try something new or they want to um, expand themselves or they just they have this like funny quirk that they like the spreadsheets or they, you know they want to do this quirky thing and and then when somebody's um, really excited about doing whatever task that is you know that becomes their superpower just by their their motivation and interest in it and so um yeah yeah I, and actually that's yeah. part of the fun I think of 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 Burning Man you know as I said it was like uh, you know, working on an art card doing you know I, I, I you know, even doing stuff for welding which I did very badly but you know that's not the sort of thing I would normally do and so having the opportunity to play is uh even and even doing it not all that well but doing it in good enough was is is yeah is is such a joy um and 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 yeah absolutely that um I, it, it's fun to do because it's not what i would normally do you know um exactly uh, yeah um yes uh no, so and, yeah go on i i'm really fascinated because i because um the way that people work together in groups like social geometry like curating um another thing that i that i pay attention to that i really enjoy is um curating um intimate spaces whether it's with the the art immersive immersive things that are happening with the space with like what's being served uh with the music with the the food the costumes the the performance things like that um yeah. but i also find that it's really um uh, important and I, I enjoy curating um curating you know vibes but also um curating like the intimate experience between people so yeah. um thinking about how different people's um, energies and personalities and quirks and things that they like to do will blend together to almost create a um it's almost like a recipe of like souls and so i i really enjoy putting people together in in groups to kind of share different different experiences and um so so how do you how do you so as a person who is you know that's kind of like what in some way like what you're doing for work and like you know helping you know groups work together how do you see wh what would you like to see well if you had your, your dream like what would you like to see happen in the burning culture to create more cohesion more satisfaction more fun more excitement like what would you what would you love to see like tomorrow look like <laughs> so i think the idea of curation is a really is a really good one. I talk about it. It's funny that you should use that word. I think that's a really important word um, because people sort of see leadership as uh, um, I think it's a it's an important form of leadership. When you're a leader, you don't you know one way to do it is to tell everyone what to do, and that's probably the least effective. That's um, <laughs> sorry, dictatorship. Yeah, exactly. Um, or or to to have you know to sort of be the visionary yeah and um but actually that that idea of curating and and, and saying and, and not um, and providing you know I, I talk about sort of providing the vessel you provide mm. the vessel for the interactions that and what does that look like and what do you want to achieve um and you know what i would what i tend to think about um is uh, you know being uh, being someone who's kind of introverted and um or, or at least yeah yeah People say, oh, you're not introverted, but you know, anyways, being somebody who's naturally introver introverted, but also somebody who likes to have close, intimate conversations. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that um, you know, the the sorts of things that that I I I envision as being the sorts of things I like to curate are, you know, um, you know, cuddle puddles, low light um, uh, spaces where people can can be close, um, but not. You know, but but that you know that don't necessarily um, uh, you know that, that you know, but you know that, but not necessarily in any kind of um, in any kind of sexual way. But actually, you know, opportunities, you know, quiet, intimate spaces where people can um, can meet and connect. Because you know, I think, um, and maybe I see I see this at, at Burning Man is that. You know, there's lots and lots of people who go out like to dance and big crowds and all of that and dress up and ride around on their bikes and but actually finding spaces where you can connect with those people um, is is a little, you know, is a little bit more difficult. And those are the sort of things that I look for and try and think about. Um, you know, the temple is a profound is a profound.
profound experience of Burning Man. I mean, you know, uh, as somebody you know who's who's not who doesn't believe in a higher power, um, you know that the the, the, um, the 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 you know the breadth and depth of human emotion, and particularly the depth of human emotion and expression that's in the temple is amazing. Um, and um, uh, yeah, and 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 always always profound and extremely moving. And so those are some of my favorite things. You know, so that's one of my favorite things to do at Burning Man is to go to the temple. In fact, um, uh, me and Renee, my partner, we 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 uh, we often deliberately select to go and range at the temple because then we have we spend we'll spend three hours up at the temple. And boy, is that an experience! You know, that is an incredible experience. It's also as well as being. Sorry, I'm going to get back to the question. No, I, this, is, this, is well as... this is perfect because I well, I will. Okay, I I actually want to continue down this path because I'm 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 feeling like kind of lit up by this. So, um, so you said that you are atheist and you don't believe in a higher power, but you feel something at the temple. Can you can you maybe just describe a little bit of like what you've seen or what you feel um, with respect to people's experience? Um, maybe for people who haven't been to Burning Man or who don't know what this you know temple is, can you just kind of give us like a little bit of a um idea so yes so the so the temple is a place for um for the sort of outpouring of of emotion um the the sort uh, and you know so, so people will leave notes and and messages often you know usually for for people that they've lost not always and there's there are many many different kind of things but and, and predominantly there are you know from from what i've seen there are the sort of two sorts of things you know one of which is you know tragedies associated often with people taking their own lives um or having their lives tra tragically cut short in other ways uh, and also people's uh, in fact i've thought of a third one but also so you know people's struggles with themselves and their relationships with others with you know and also often people struggle with illness particularly there's a lot of you know um there's a lot of um uh of um uh, of expressions around people's experiences for example dealing with cancer and uh and it's a profound experience in so many different ways number one because you do not see the 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 depth of expression anywhere else i mean literally nowhere else because there are you know you have this building that that, that you know um of structure that's covered in thousands and thousands and thousands of these notes of this sort of the you know incredible emotional outpouring um and you don't see that anywhere else and that's really really important because we need to connect with each other on, a, on an emotional level much more um, the second thing I think is that um, uh, it's it's also very very human, uh, uh, which is why you know I, uh, in that th these are people's experiences uh, and their own expressions, um, and you know often they're people who have lost you know they've lost or um, you know and 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 not only the emotions that goes with that but but the sort of the the existential the, the 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 reason why we're here and so i'm i'm often filled even though it's full of tragedy with um with the feeling that this is why we're here to to have all the experiences and to be here to experience as much as we can because it will all be gone and there's a very real sense of the loss that people are feeling um the the that's why you know uh you know to be lucky to be fit and healthy uh and you know and you know and, and relatively um uh without you know mental uh you know without um you know mental emotional challenges um that's why i should be um being the best version of the human being that i can be because i've got these gifts that other people don't so it's sounding, it's sounding like to me that let's see you mentioned um people having loss of others like their um 
you know, people I've seen pets, you know, things, things that like, uh, the loss of, you know, grieving, like the loss of some, something, someone that has crossed over or no longer yeah. exists here, um, dealing with the, um, uh, mental health and physical health struggles and yeah. then also the relationship with others. And so it's sounding like, um, it's, it's the, um, kind of like confronting our own mortality and yeah, then one absolutely. can maybe even argue to say that like having relationship struggles with each other like in a very core um animalistic way having relationships with others could you know used to mean like loss of survival like if you were like when we were tribal around a fire say like if you were not in relationship you might get pushed out which could you know mean mean death. And yeah. so, so it's interesting. So, so I feel like you're touching on something really, really innately human, this existential, um, uh, experience that, that people are, are facing here at the temple. So what is that? What, what is it? If it's not that, that higher, if there, if you don't believe in a higher power, then what is the energy there? What is that? And I'm not, I'm not trying to challenge you, but I'm just trying to understand and like, you know, see how your mind works with this. No, um, because it's, uh, it's, it's about what it fundamentally is to be human. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, all the stuff around getting a job and getting a car and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, um, all of those things, um, uh, it, it makes them, you know, it, it, and, and, you know, worrying about what somebody said to you or whatever. Um, the thing, the little petty things that you worry about every day, it puts them into, you know, it, it, it puts them into sharp, um, you know, it makes them seem uh, small and they should be. Yeah, kind of like it brings the focus into like life and death. Like you're like really- yes. and, and why, why existence is so fragile and so such a gift and that you know, and, and to be clear, whether there's a high, you know, I, I I'd love there to be another, um, you know, to another life after this one, um, but I I do not, you know, but I, I, you know, my view is I don't need need to rely on that, and, and because you know, to think that oh well, life will be better in my next life. No, this if this is all I've got, this is why I've got to live it in the best possible way I can, because uh, you know. Um, because I have the gift of being able to do that. And that's why I need to live. And that's why I need to be a burning man. And that's why I need to be in all the, the ways that I can be the best version of myself I can be, because this is all I've got. Um, right. And eventually I hope somebody will put me in the, you know, will put me in the temple. Um, uh, because, you know, I mean, that's, yeah, it's, it, it's sort of where, we're, you know, well, you know, we, we're all, none of us are getting out of here alive. You know? exactly exactly so how does this relate this idea of like if this is all there is if it's just this like this little bit of you know peace on a timeline if that's all that there is and it's important to like have adventures and make it count and you know go to the mountains and go to the deserts and see you know this um if that's all there is then how does that relate to the 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 release in the roller coaster like where do we where, where do we how, where does that bring us in the in the roller coaster seat it's because you mean you've got to just enjoy the ride because the ride will finish and when the ride finishes you know you might you might look back and think wow i really enjoyed that ride even though i was terrified at the time um and i think um what well, i was going to say something else and what was it it was um that's right it, it was also the fact that the other thing about this is that that if you're not doing it for a higher power there are two reasons why you're doing it you're doing whatever you're doing Number one, it's it's for your own experience, but it's also once you step outside the idea that it's the world is all about you, then it's about how you share that with other people. And so, really, people are all you've got, isn't it? So much not you know, if you have adventures, adventures are great, and then you take photos. I went on this mountain and look, here's me up the mountain, and I had an amazing time on the mountain. And isn't it nicer to be able to share that with other people and say, hey, I had this great experience up this mountain. It was amazing, and the snow was coming in, and blah blah blah. Um, and and so, you know, all those things, you can have those experiences, but without other people, then they're also kind of meaningless because we exist in other people. We exist through the DNA and the memories and the cultures that we've grown up that we don't even know about and can't even conceive. And in the same way, our existence will be 
you know, will be um, perpetuated in all sorts of tiny ways simply through our, our existence in the world and the ripples we send out. You know, that the, you will talk, you know, the, whatever, the person you buy, you know, uh, your grocery store, you know, your groceries off, you know, the day after tomorrow, when you say, hey, I like your hair, that's great. That will send out ripples to them in, in, in all sorts of ways that you won't ever know. And I think there's a so there's a there's a beauty in that, and there's also a sense of the of, of of why people are all we've got, and that's why connecting with people and trying to, um, you know, trying to help, you know, <laughs> spread love to people and all those kind of things, um, and sharing things with people are so important. Uh, and I find actually that much more motivating, and much more real. Um, than the idea that we would be doing it because there's a higher power. If there is a higher power and the higher power is awesome, the higher power will agree with me. Yes. Uh, and there will, will not be any problems. And if, there, if the higher power thinks that I should have, you know, worshipped something that I didn't, then I'm not that interested in what that higher power thinks. I think that that would be a ridiculous thing to, <laughs> to you know. Um, if there is a higher power, I feel like I've come the closest to knowing it and experiencing it at Burning Man. Yeah. That's my truth. And, and that's not to say I don't feel incredible euphoria, you know, um, uh, but, uh, but I don't, and maybe that does come from a higher power and if it does, thank you. But it, it's, for me, it, it's, it's sort of not, I, I don't need it to, to describe it to, for it to make sense and for it to um, uh, be part of, a, a, a spiritual experience for me. Sure. I have a real problem with spirituality because I, I you know, I, I, I try, I, I honestly internally think I'm spiritual, but as soon as I, but I'm also kind of, I, I, I find that there's a certain sort of spirituality that people assume when they talk about being spiritual that I'm not at all. Um, it's a shame, actually. I would like to, and this is actually one of the reasons why I think this is a wonderful conversation I was really enthusiastic about this it is 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 to explore this idea you know in myself that um yeah that that I have you know my, my I have a human I'm a humanist spiritualist and I find it difficult to talk about those things because lots of people like to talk about higher powers and energy who are trying to think in these ways and I and I would love to have more conversations with people who uh, and connect with people uh, to find their own spirituality without necessarily those things, not you know, because because I think there's a whole set of conversations to have with people you know who don't necessarily believe in a god, but actually also, you know, yeah, anyway, you know. Yeah, I think it's um, absolutely. I think the uh, I think it's really personal. I think that that spirituality is is a, it's an inside job. It's a, it's a it's a personal thing, but also. You know, it's a it's a um, it's a way of of truly the way that I understand it to be is just like um, creating union between um, all uh, aspects of ourself and like really you know having that fully integrated experience where we're taking in all of the information that you know that our brain is picking up that we're not always cognitive of you know because there's all this like subconscious stuff going on so like becoming more aware of subconscious stuff listening being really embodied feeling the way that um not just our brain but our um our our body our physicality is our physiology is picking up on information and And then, and then really allowing, um, you know, being aware of like the connection and like the, um, the bond that you feel when you're in someone else's presence, um, but, but not, you know, and, and being aware of sourcing, uh, or enjoying that in an interdependent way and not sucking that person's energy and like, you know, preserving, having sovereignty in your, in your field yeah. as well. And so like all of those things is, um, is what spirituality is to me. Um, mm. I think once we get into dogma, um, yeah. you know, when we are like, well, it's gotta be this, and this is the, the, you know, this religion says this, then it just becomes more divisive. Um, yes. I think it's, I think it's really personal. It's really personal. And like somebody's one person can, um, you know, worship and be devoted to um, plants, 
and that's their thing. One person can be devoted to cats. One person can be devoted to like, <laughs> It doesn't matter. Like, it's just a matter of like, just um, devotion. But my opinion, this is just, you know, what Holly said has to say, which is insignificant, you know, but um, my opinion is that it's about devotion to the divine and you can fill in whatever the divine is for you, whatever yeah. that means to you. If it means, um, you know, partying with your friends in the desert or the woods around a fire, if it means, um, if it means, you know, devotion to your family, if it means, um, you know, some mythology that, that you feel attached to, whatever, I don't really care. <laughs> you know, like I, I respect everybody's, uh, you know, devotion to the divine and that, you know, my concept is we're all just playing this, this game. It's like a simulation, you know, that we're all just <laughs> yeah. doing a simulation. And really the, the biggest rule is just not to prevent anyone else from playing the game, yeah. you know, how they want to play it. And, you know, yeah. the, holding that sovereignty, you know, where like, please don't cross into my boundaries. I'll try not to cross into yours. You know, let's all have fun together. Yeah, that's right. Um, uh, yes. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I think I need to sort of, yeah um work on both of those things uh i can be um you know I, I can be very um dismissive of of certain you know spiritual views um as a you know as as a scientist and somebody who you know uh yeah um and yeah um i, I i've also you know i i wasn't um I, I, I found that, you know, one of the things that that I found when I moved to the US is is the way in which, you know, gods are used to man manipulate people. Um, and it, it has. Uh, yeah. And so I so, so I find those things very triggering and <laughs> and and I'm not always as polite as I should be to, to people who with those sorts of belief, in part, because I think it is. I think it can be very um, uh, constricting um, that, that there's a there's a sense of you have to believe in this, uh, and so you can't you've got to reject all these other beliefs. Um, I'm you know uh, I I would um, uh, uh, and yeah, um, but finding you see you know I, I and this is a this is a challenge I have is is you know if you had and here's a here's a ethical question for you if you had a friend who was you know uh, into cinderella or santa claus and they lived their life around santa claus or cinderella and one day santa claus was going to come or cinderella was going to come and you know would wave the magic wand and everything would be much better and they lived their life around this and that's all they thought you know that's that's what they they made their decisions on oh what would cinders do what would santa do where is your responsibility to say, oh, hold on, this maybe isn't true, and that maybe you want to be thinking, maybe you don't want to be living your life around the fact that Santa is going to arrive with all your presents, or, or you know, your fairy or godmother is going to arrive and wave a, wave a wand and turn you into, you know, some sort of fairy. Um, how, where, where does that, where does that boundary lie? How do you, you know, how do you address that with? Yeah, or should you? Um, I mean, personally, I feel like we're all subscribing to our own choice of reality anyway. And so what makes, um, you know, religion any different than, you know, culture, than any different from politics, any different from the orientation, you know, sexual orientation, like we're all just kind of like going with what um, what feels good to us until further notice, you know? Mm. And so I, I feel like as long as it's, you know, if something's not hurting, um, hurting others and people are getting joy out of it, then I'm, I'm inclined to just let, you know, live and let live. But then there are times when, when it encroaches on other people's experience and yeah. um, and then there is a need to look into that but i mean you can worship flying spaghetti monster all day <laughs> you know like like more power to you you know like we yeah. we love noodles <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, you know it's it, it's really like i you know I, I think it's just a matter of like you know respect and and sovereignty you know mm. letting people letting people believe what what brings them joy like what's the harm in that 
you know, and just because I don't get it or don't believe in it doesn't mean that, that they should stop. You know, that's, that's my, my take on that. Now, if it's something where they're persecuting others for, you know, this belief system, then it's like, okay, hold up, you know, <laughs> like you're preventing um, someone else from playing the game. I think it's, you know, yeah. we're all playing a game. Some people might say like, okay, I'm going to play this. Um, I'm going to do uh, be, come to this earth and be, you know, a Buddhist in this lifetime, or I'm going to, um, you know, be a Satanist, or I'm going to um, just do whatever wild things that people choose to do, whatever, you know, free freedom of choice, free will. Um, and unless they're keeping someone else from playing the game, then mm. mm -hmm. yeah, have, have a good time and just be respectful. You know? <laughs> Yeah, I just don't think that we're like here. Like nobody, I, personally, I don't think anybody really knows. There's no definitive proof. No, absolutely. I don't not. think we're ever going to know while we're in this no. limited container with a limited like awareness that we yeah, have. Absolutely. We're never going to fully know. And yeah. so, you know, put up your hands and enjoy the ride on the roller coaster. Exactly. <laughs> yes. No. Exactly. So just like <laughs> lean into like the fun of like the the surrender of like let's just have a good time with this i'm okay if yeah. i don't know i drove myself crazy like literally crazy for you know in my 20s seeking you know for myself like right. studying all different religions and philosophies and reinventing myself until i just you know found myself in the center of a labyrinth where i just needed to you know surrender oh. and yeah. um and what i found yeah, yeah. Wow. Not yeah, yeah. I, I had to be at peace with not knowing and then oh, no. felt free and then I was able to have fun yeah no and I think that I think that is, yes it's it's the it's being okay with not knowing um I think that's a, a beautiful way to put it yeah um and and by the way not knowing and, and the, all the ways in which all the possibilities that opens up all the infinite number of possibilities actually it's great you know yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's not and it's not that i have like apathy like i don't care oh i cared you know i cared so much i like drove myself crazy with it a little bit <laughs> but, um, but then I, eventually i was like well nobody's ever really gonna know you know no. really never gonna know some of these conspiracies that people like to you know um get super yeah. ze zealous about too you know we're never we're ne like unless you're like in the thing you know you're never gonna know and then even then even just between two people it's you know we never actually like there's no way no matter how close I could get to knowing you as a friend you know there's no way that I could ever really know what it's like to be you or what it feels like inside your your head and your heart and your experience and so there's some things we just have to be at peace with not knowing and just say yeah. I will do my best to, to honor and respect your experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes, there's a sort of wonderful kind of sort of philosoph philosophical um, conundrum, in, you know, that, that we, you know, that you sort of learn in, I don't know, week one or week two of, of, of you know, psychology classes, which is that, you know, if the brain was so simple um, that we could understand it, we wouldn't be able to understand it. You know, that-, that, that Oh, indeed. You see what I mean? That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, you know, if it was simple, yeah that that how can we yeah that that our brain yeah <laughs> anyway <laughs> paradox that if our yeah if our brain was simple enough to understand that we would be too simple to understand it um so um yeah and the same goes for that idea of yeah that um the the the, the main you know maybe there is a sort of higher power out there but we would you know it, it would it, we we would have be able to conceive of it as much as you know an ant can conceive of you know of, of a human being um, and that's yeah, and that's okay, um, and 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 that's actually a beautiful thing. Um, I find it's very freeing, and I, you know, um, and that's also a kind of a source of that that view for me around. Well, okay, then people are what we you know what we have, uh, and those and that's why we've got to kind of um, uh, look after each other and um, and be the best version of, of ourselves we can be, and provide. <laughs> The con, you know, the 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 the, the, the crucible, the context to curate the situations where other people can be the best versions of themselves that they can be. I find that really what what's happening too is that um, there's there's so much projection and reflection going on in like all of our relationships, and so every person that I encounter, I can see myself and every single person like whether it's you know they're you know, these beautiful amazing um you know healers teachers or whether they're you know people that are dealing with you know their shadow stuff you know like feeling murderous or jealous or whatever you know like we we have all of the my belief is that we're designed 
in these um, multi-dimensional uh, human aspects and that within each one, each and every one of us, we can, we have every aspect within us. And then we just kind of choose which, which pieces we want to express. And like, what makes yeah. us like, you know, a good or bad person is how well we manage, you know, the things that are perceived as, you know, bad, um, you know, and that changes. It, it's a continuum too, like something that might've been like oh, shocking, you know, clutch your pearls, like in the, you know, fifties or whatever is like happening, like blatantly, you know, now, <laughs> yeah. You know, so, um, you know, so that's, you know, I think, I think it's, you know, it comes down to like judgment, it comes down to, um, yeah, which, which I think is kind of like circling back to like, you know, if somebody, you know, worships, you know, Cinderella or Santa or something like that, it's like, well, you know, um, are we judging that? Like, does that, you know, and if we're, and if we're judging other people's um, things that they believe, then like, where are we? judging ourselves <laughs> you know or where where we may be not okay with the things or the fear that maybe we believe in some, or maybe something we believe isn't real mm -hmm. yeah i mean i'm sure that, yeah <laughs> i'm sure there are things we both believe that aren't real um but yeah yeah no you're absolutely right uh yeah interesting yeah. i mean what, I, uh, what i'm is definitely gonna take that away yeah and uh and cogitate on that for myself i mean what what really is real though you know like if we're able to like imagine something and then like just create it out of thin air <laughs> it started with a thought you know like and so it was like at what point did it come become real once we were able to like tangibly like you know have matter on it or like or was it real as a thought mm -hmm. yeah so what if we're all just like you know playing like maybe we're all sitting in another place like with VR headsets and we're just like oh I'm gonna choose this avatar and then here's this thing I got this these powers and here's my superpowers and here's my health and here's my weaknesses and, <laughs> and like just like okay let's choose to like all right we'll go into the desert and like have a costume and here's your weapon and here's your thing you know we're doing it and so like what who's to say that you know that this is real you know maybe we're really just you know wearing a VR headset somewhere else and when we're done with this we're gonna go jump in the pool or you know, go get a snow cone or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, and all the more reason to enjoy it um, as it is. We're on the, you know, we're on this ride. So let's, uh, you know, so enjoying the ride that we're on. Uh, and, uh, you know, until it's not, a, until it's a ride that we're not on anymore, until it's the ride that we, we you know, that, that somebody else decides for us it's time to get off. Um, and then, uh, or, yeah, or until it's time to get off at least, yeah. Um, so what would be your, what would be like your, um, what would be something that, that would be, if you could tell, share your best piece of advice, your best piece of wisdom that you've learned from your life so far, or just one that, that comes to the surface in this question, <laughs> what would be, what would be something that if you just had a platform to, to share something that just made a huge impact in your life, a learning, a realization to just share with the world, what would that be? Hmm. Um, so I think, um, I think, num I think, um, I'm going to, I'm going to have two. So one is, is, is always see things in a, as an adventure that, that, you know, everything is, everything is an adventure. Um, and you know, adventures have good things and bad things, but they're, it's an adventure. Um, but the other thing is, and, and it's a, something that I really like that, that I think is really useful, particularly for relationships, but it goes for other things too, is, you know, is that there's, you know, um, that we, we worry about loss. Mm -hmm. There's only one, one way, you know, particularly in relationships, but about things and about people. Um, there's only really one way in which you won't lose, you know, in which, you know, you won't lose somebody or something. And that's if you die first. Um, and I think that's very freeing. Um, because it stops you worrying about having to hold on to things um, and stop them and prevent their growth um, and prevent, you know, whatever that is, whether that's, you know, whether that's, you know, a, um, a dog that you have or your favorite shirt or, you know, or the love of your life. Um, there's only one way you won't, lose, you won't lose all of those things and that's if you die first. Um, and that's okay, you know. I think that that um, and, and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't you shouldn't treat them badly, and you shouldn't, you know, 
try and it, sorry, it doesn't doesn't mean you should you know, should, should treat them treat them bad, you know treat anything badly. It's more just that that thing of you know it it's it, loss is okay, and grief is okay, and it's part of you know whatever that loss is that that's just part of what you have to do. And you know and ultimately it's uh, it's a decision. Do you want to you know, do you want to protect, try and protect yourself from that by not entering into close relationships with any ideas or any people or, you know, any things, or do you want to have that experience, the adventure? Do you want to go on that ride, even though it's going to be terrifying and it might make you cry and, you know, it, it might be disastrous in the end, but, but you know, all right, don't get on the ride. Um, so, you know, um, so I think that, you know, for me, it's that, 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 um, it's about understanding that, that that loss is okay. That, that there's only when one way you won't, you know, um, you're not going to, uh, to to grieve something, and that's if you die first. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's um, uh, one of the downloads that I got was that um, that security is just an illusion. Like nothing's promised to us, and that it's no reason to to play small. So it's like you know, none of us are getting out of here alive. So um yeah. yeah so so buy the ticket take the ride ride the roller coaster yeah. and depend yeah and that doesn't mean you shouldn't value all the things you have and you shouldn't you know it doesn't mean you, every ride is going to be right for you and but it also means that you shouldn't yeah that, exactly yeah take, take the ride uh, uh, and enjoy it for what it is um and don't try and hold on <laughs> yeah and then it, and when parts of the ride get harrowing that's when you try to turn to your superpowers <laughs> <laughs> yeah and or that's right and also know that it is a ride and they would you know eventually that will end too in one way or another yep. yeah that's reminding me yeah the impermanence of of a burning man in general too just like all the art is yeah. like and uh you know the it, you know but i do feel like the things that we do take with us is the transformation yeah absolutely yeah um Yes, and that's why, yeah, that's why I'm a Burning Man four stroke evangelist. <laughs> <laughs> Burning Man's a cult and I'm all in. <laughs> <It is>. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, cult cult is just, you know, the shortened version of culture and that's that's what it is. <laughs> oh, that's, good one. Yeah. That's what we're trying to, you know, that's what we're trying to do is just, you know, um, exist in this culture where we are you know, sharing and growing and uplifting and learning about each other and ourselves and um and I think that that's what that's what God is is the is the adventure it is the the relationships it's the experience of the transformation and the self-reflection yeah wow that's beautiful thank you that's a really wonderful summary of the things we've we've been talking about well, thank you so much for um, for putting it all out there. This is really, really good stuff. And I've really enjoyed speaking with you. And um, thank you so much for for showing up vulnerably and powerfully and, and sharing who you are with us. Is there um, is there anything that you want to uh, promote or um, tell people about or anything else in this moment? No, I don't think so. Um, no, um, no, it would, it would. Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you so much. Uh, I'll yes. promote you. Um, thank you so much. It's, it's been wonderful. Um, uh, and and thank you for inviting me. And this has been fun. And um, no, I feel sort of honoured. Um, and yeah. Excellent. Well, I am honoured as well. Thank you so much for your your friendship and your interest and willingness to to be on my podcast. Thank you for sharing your sweet self with us. And I look forward to many more deep conversations with you around campfires and various um yes, strange art happenings <laughs> i would love that I would love okay that. fantastic well have a beautiful day and i really appreciate you thank you so thank much you. for joining Take us care.